was a maintenance worker at Ruby Beer when suddenly he died in his 83rd year. He risked his life to save a little girl. Then he woke up in a whole nother world. When he first arrived to this strange new place, he was confused and alone, so left and right he would pace. A few moments later, a blue man appeared, told him not to be afraid. He was full of cheer. He told Eddie what this place was about. Unfortunately for Eddie, not a word he could shout. This place was heaven. It was nothing he'd seen. Something you could imagine only if it was a dream. The blue man explained about the five people you meet and how everyone is connected even if by your feet. We all play a part in one another's life in ways we don't know or in ways like a wife. The blue man explained about his blue skin and about the area he chose to stay in. He taught Eddie all about his first lesson and soon realized he was dead like Marcus Weston. The blue man vanished and Eddie was alone. He was now dead so not a friend he could phone when the seeds around him changed and the sky turned blue. A friendly face then appeared as captain from World War II. The captain then talked while he smoked a cigarette and told Eddie about a choice that he now regrets. He shot Eddie in the leg in order to save him, so Eddie beat him up and then he forgave him. They had a nice talk about the days in the war, about how after they had no idea what was in the store, they talked about the other guys and if they kept in touch. But talking about it almost seemed like it was too much. The captain taught Eddie about sacrifice and about how the captain had risked his own life. In order to save his team from a deadly landmine, the captain was surely one of a kind. And once again, the surroundings changed. This time, Eddie ended up in a mountain range where there was a lonely diner out on the hillside. So Eddie walked up and ventured inside. Inside, he saw people eating freshly cooked food, but then he saw something that ruined his mood. In the corner he saw his father smoking a cigar, feeling upset because their connection was far. He yelled and screamed, but nothing would happen, and on his shoulder a waitress was tapping. She told him he couldn't hear him just to calm down. It took a few seconds before Eddie came around. She was Eddie's third person. She went by Ruby out of the other people. She was such a beauty. Eddie had never met her and just gazed in fear. She was the one who inspired Ruby Pier. They had a long talk about the pier and how it came to be. Ruby's husband built it despite the economy. The pier burned down with a firework accident and her husband Emil was no longer management. Ruby taught Eddie all about forgiveness. She looked at his dad. Eddie didn't want to witness. He screamed at his father and let his feelings out. The scenes then changed and Eddie was out. Eddie found himself in a room full of light. The only other thing was a door to his right. He entered the door. His mind was jetting. He found himself staring at someone else's wedding. Then out of the blue, his deceased wife appeared, looking like she did in her youthful younger years. Eddie was happy to see the love of his life. Marguerite, his first and only wife, she talked to him about their love and how God's all from above. But Eddie felt he needed to hear more, so on they walked through endless wedding doors. As time flew by and they talked on and on, Eddie's lesson was learned and then he was gone. In the world of heaven, everything was now white, but in his heart, Eddie did not feel right. Children soon appeared doing childish things when an Asian little girl said some foolish things. She was Eddie's fifth person, small like a koala. She introduced herself and her name was Tala. Eddie saw her before but didn't know it was her. She was crawling in a fire, it was such a blur. He tried to save her life but the captain had shot him and he never forgave himself so his future became dim. Tala isn't mad, I don't think she understands. Tala says she saved him by grabbing his hand. She tells Eddie his life was full of meaning. It put a smile on his face which was now gleaming. And in the end, Eddie was with Marguerite at Ruby Pier hanging out on the Ferris wheel. He heard another noise and he knew it wasn't alone. Surely enough, it was God and he had said home.